This is the Earth, and it has its own gravitational field. Today we're discussing the general theory of relativity, our most up-to-date understanding of gravity. Let's dive right in. Hello folks, this is Reef Akbari, Brown University graduate student in physics. And my name is Mornalaj Berry, and I'm doing my bachelor's in math and physics at NYU. In the last lecture, we talked about contravariant and covariant tensors in general relativity and how they transform. So today we're going to go deeper into transfer, tensor transformations. So first, let's do a brief recap of what we did last time. All right. Okay. So what is a contravariant and covariant vector? So imagine a contravariant vector what, uh, or a contravariant tensor, like just a small step in the direction of a basis vector. So dxm, for example. And how do they transform? So like, if we have a specific contravariant vector, or if, if we have a specific contravariant component, and then we change reference frames, then how does our vector respond? And actually, when we change reference frames, our vector doesn't change, just the coordinates that we use to describe it will. So how does it change? Well, we can say that dym, which is our contravariant in the new reference frame, is equivalent to the summation over a summing variable or dummy variable, p. It doesn't matter what you actually call it. We can exchange names. We can call it p. We can call it q. We can call it smiley face. But for simplicity, I'm going to call it p. So then we have the sum over p of partial ym, partial xp, dxp, where this is our old contravariant vector, and we just have a partial derivative right here. Now, on the other side, if we have a covariant vector, you can essentially imagine that kind of like a gradient. So you know how a gradient is <clears throat> essentially just containing all of the partial derivatives of your function, so partial z partial oops, sorry, partial z partial x, partial z partial y, uh, and I mean this is the gradient for a two D surface. But anyway, we can imagine it kind of like a gradient because all a covariant vector is is we're taking the derivative of our surface or whatever it is. Our scalar our field. Our scalar function. Yes, yes, that's what our surface is. Over a specific vector, a basis vector to be specific. So in Cartesian coordinates, when we're taking the gradient of a scalar field or a surface, when we're taking the gradient of one of these, we do it in the x direction and in the y direction, the two basis vectors. And in the same way, whenever we change our basis, uh, this covariant vector is going to change. So how does it change? Well, we'll let ds dym, which is what our covariant vector is described as after changing to the y reference frame, is equivalent to the summation over a, yet another dummy variable. So we get partial s, partial xp, dxp, dym. Remember, over here, these summation variables have to disappear in the final product. So we've got our previous covariant here and our new covariant after transforming right over here. So let's generalize this outside of y and x. So let's say our old reference frame here was v, and our new reference no, no. frame was... That's our tensor V. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. So our old tensor was V, and our new tensor is V prime once we change reference frames to, from X to Y. Oh, yeah, these are the components of our tensor V in the old coordinate frame, and this is in the I, new I, coordinate I know. Okay, so... You scare me sometimes. So we get, in general... V prime M, now since we've got two superscripts, just going to put it with parents, 
and we're going to remove the Einstein to Mason notation. So all we have here, just the old covariant, contravariant, sorry, Vm times partial Ym, partial dummy variable. You mean Vp, so that the dummy variable gets summed over. Sometimes God freaking shut up, you know. <laughs> okay. One second. Go ahead and generalize this one. And we're going to use W to signify that this is a covariant comp component. I feel pressure. Why? I feel like I'm being watched by an evil entity. It's covariant. I'm sorry! <laughs> one more mistake and you're done. What? Okay, great. So you've written down the tensor transformation rules for contravariant and for covariant component of tensors, right? Yeah. Great, wonderful. Now, let's go ahead and write down what we know about vectors. Now let's take a look at a vector, V. Mm -hmm. Now, I can write this vector in terms of its components, like this. Thanks, Sherlock. Okay. But I can write that in general in summation notation. So, V to the M times E to the M, right? Of course. So, Sherlock. these are the components of the tensor. V and these are the contravariant components. These are our contravariant components of the tensor. Yeah, they're just like regular basis vectors. And so geometrically, what that means is if I have my non orthogonal coordinate system made out of these basis vectors, then the projection of my vector V along these two basis vectors are going to be v to the 1 and v to the 2. That's what these contravariant components are. Okay, can now, we write, how can we write covariant components? Good question. To get the covariant components, v sub n, I just take the vector v and I dot it with whatever direction I want to find the covariant component of. Interesting. That's so it. you said last time that we can essentially describe a space-time or any manifold that we want by just knowing the length of every vector within it. Mm -hmm. So how do we find the length of a specific vector? Very good question. What's another way I can write it? In vector notation, if this is the vector v, then its length is just v dot v, right? Mm -hmm. Same thing here. So, cosine theta, how do we re resolve well, this? An easy way to see that this problem doesn't exist is if our two basis vectors are orthogonal, then cosine of theta is cosine of 90, which is zero. Okay, and so this wait generalizes a to an arbitrary coordinate system where the two basis vectors are not orthogonal. So wait a second. This looks a little bit familiar because if you have two non-perpendicular, non-orthogonal sides of a triangle, you can find the third side using the law of cosines, which looks almost exactly the same as this does, plus 2ab cosine theta. So... We've got the same exact formula right over here, and that's how it gets resolved. Exactly. Very nice. So, okay, that is our next thing. Let me focus on this over here. So now let me factor out the scalar parts. So Vm times Vn. And let me put the two vectors with each other, Em dot Em. I accept that. Okay. And then this right here, believe it or not, is the metric hmm. gmn okay let me so think about that why is this true we'll find that out in the next episode mm. so the metric gmn is the dot product of these two basis vectors em and en interesting yeah and the last thing is what the connection between covariant and contravariant components so let me start with this over here. Vn is equal to the dot product of the vector with one of the basis vectors. So V, we know what V is in terms of the contravariant components. So I'm going to plug that in here. So V sub n is, instead of V, I'm going to put this. V sub n, E sub m, dotted with E sub n. Oh, wait a second. What is that? We've just got the metric again. So this is just the metric. Vm, Gmn. Okay, so now let's summarize the rules that we 
have just discovered. So first of all, we saw that we can write a vector v in terms of its contravariant components like this. Mm -hmm. These are the contravariant components of the vector. We discovered that the covariant components are just the dot product of the vector v with one of the basis vectors. Mm -hmm. We learned that the geometric interpretation of these two just different the, tensors. It's just the pro different projections of our original vector onto our basis vectors. That's right. Two different types of projections. So here is my vector v, right? Mm -hmm. The contravariant projection is just a long parallel to the basis vectors. Yeah. This is v1. This is v2. Meanwhile, covariant is when we do it perpendicularly. So what is the last two things? Metric is equal to just the dot product of the two basis vectors. And finally, we discovered with these three, the association mm -hmm. between covariant and contravariant vectors. Yeah. Okay. And what were the transformation rules for contravariant and covariant vectors? Let's write them here. DYM is partial YM, partial XP. Mm -hmm. dxp and oh sorry ds dym which mm -hmm. is our new covariance vector is equal to this sum so it's just partial s partial xp dxp dym okay perfect that's it that's all we learned over all of the lectures so far so thank you for watching uh take my hand